Good morning, commissioners. My name is Pat Johnson. I'm founder of Texas Towing Compliance, and uh, I hear from victims all across the state every day. Uh, I've got quite a bit of stuff to talk about, but I can even talk about some of it. There was a, uh, a recent regulatory interpretation by TV law that punishes the honest and law-abiding towing and storage companies. Storage facilities are supposed to accept people's credit cards. That's fair. But a new leak, but a new regulatory credit cards that belong to other folks other than those retrieving their vehicles. Such transactions increasingly result in chargebacks and penalties assessed by their financial institutions regardless of the legality of the tow. Is it fair or wise to subject vehicle storage to this financial hazard? Ask that you please reconsider this and remember this for society's benefit. Another thing uh, I'm hearing about is people have no way to check the status of their complaints when they file. Whenever they do get a hold of someone, it's, they don't, they're not told anything. But if we want people to continue to file complaints against licensees for committing rule violations, and then you get letters, for, I got a letter back from on a and and another company called Customs Record Service that operated without a license for close to 60 days seen their trucks running up down the road, so I initiated a complaint, and I get a letter from your agency that says I had to provide you proof that they were operating. When the police department presented all the documentation during that time period to enforcement at the time, and but they rejected the complaint because I can't provide. If we want people to file complaints based on what your database says when someone is operating without a license or a suspended license, and then you information based on your criteria on your database it says they're operating without a license so what gives there it doesn't make any sense uh, another thing we've got a concern about and TD Lord you all know you can do something about this without legislative approval stopping these companies that owe you like Merlin transport you find them $21,000 and they ain't paid zero. And they're creating another company to move all their equipment over to another company called Tarrant County Abandoned Vehicle Removal, Inc. And I guess we're gonna, they're going to talk about rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Uh, another issue, municipalities of... I've talked to, said TDLR's website doesn't go far enough in the final order where you look up violations of a licensee. It only lists a little bit small detail of the violation. So someone could collect on the tow case number so it would bring up the PDF file so other companies and licensees can see what violations their competitors are being cited for so they don't fall in the same criteria of getting fined for creating the same violation. Does that not make sense, Mr. Denton? Uh, other than that, you know, over in San Antonio, towing companies continue to lady $85. And if you recall, it was John Deloach that sat right here in front of you that day and told you that if he didn't have $250 when the tow fee study didn't even set the tow that he was going to go out of business and get having to charge $85 and close to 400 citations for charging the excess of the city ordinance violation and it doesn't do any absolutely no good to file complaints because TDR nevertheless allows postponement after postponement without postponement without charging the towing company in the storage facility for that time, do we have to use staff to move them over, 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 over? Why do we have baseless continued postponements when the victim, they don't get no postponement. They have to pay for their car right then or they lose their vehicle. What's fair is fair. Next, are such administrative trials handled even with Why should the accused get continued depriving their victims of their right to a speedy administrative trial? 
It takes about a year to emerge from through TD Lore. A smallish amount, settlement amount, be work that taxpayers say TDLR do. You know, uh, he sucks extensions. So why does TDR nevertheless postponement, postponement, postponement? We want to cut them. I told us in the previous meeting, we need to stick with these fines. Fines is the only way you're going to get their attention. They're going to keep coming. And he's going to sit out here and whittle that fine away, just like that signature case. It started at $4,000, then we got it all the way down to $2,800. What? Pulling out their apartment complex because they got stickered instead of getting the certified letter. The certified letter, and of course, Mr. Rabbi, if you understand the last meeting when we talked about the expired inspection sticker scam, the sticker does not mean anything for an expired inspection sticker. It might be good for a flat tire or leaking fluids or something like that, but an expired inspection sticker, you could cover the entire car in an orange wrap, vehicle wrap. The law requires that the parking facility send that certified letter, not the towing company. It has absolutely zero to do with the towing company. We did it for a specific reason, because the towing industry wanted to make that money. They're still making that money, and they're getting away with it because the public doesn't know. So... Let's have a good week and a good summer. I don't really have much to say, Mr. Dent, other than the same thing every year. Every, we just want more information to be allowed to the public. When you click on look search violations by licensee, you ought to be able to click on that general order and see what it is that you signed and Mr. Coons signed finding these people so they know what their competitors are doing. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, as Thank always. You. Move now to...